Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay, so welcome to the first TTGG webinar of the 2022-23 school year. And we hope that your year is off to a great start. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Erica Gerace and I am a genomics education fellow working at Jax in Farmington, Connecticut. And I'll be presenting this webinar today. Oops. So today we're going to be discussing some new content that's been developed by our team and get and I'll be giving you a live demonstration of um, this content, which is on cancer genetics. And following this, the TTGG team will be going over some program updates and announcements. This meeting will be webinar style, so if you have any questions, you can add them into the chat. Um, but I'll be addressing questions about this content at the end of the presentation. Also, this webinar is being recorded, so um, I'm going to be going pretty quickly through the information and through the demonstration, but no needs to take notes or follow along um, as you will have access to the link after the webinar. So the TTGG team has been very busy designing new lessons and content on bioinformatics and genomics. And overall, the goal of this content is to emphasize and teach math and data literacy. This is all going to be virtual, so it'll be free and accessible for anybody who wants to use it. And we are creating content in four new areas, all of which will become a module. And the four content areas are cancer genetics, sequence comparison and identity, the orient, the origin of new variation and mutation in the genome, as well as ancestry. And these are gonna be the topics of the future webinars that we will present this year, but stay tuned for the dates of those webinars um, upcoming in this presentation. Today, we will be talking about cancer genetics. So let's dive in. So this cancer genetics module is going to have up to four activities, each of which is gonna utilize a publicly available database to investigate topics such as cancer inheritance, gene variants contributing to cancer progression, personalized medicine, and health disparities. The skills that are gonna be emphasized in this module are gonna include data analysis and interpretation, specifically graphical analysis, data presentation, pattern recognition, computation, and problem solving. So this is a visual guide of the module as it is now. This is actually the table of contents from the module's teacher guide, but you can see the organization of the module as well as its components. So to start, there's an introductory content that includes descriptions of all the lessons and activities. And then the next section is a breakdown of the actual lessons, which focus on hereditary cancer. And I'll be giving a demo of these lessons, but for now I'll provide you with a brief description. The first is an activity in which students will use a publicly available database in cancer genomics called the CBIO portal. And using this database, it is possible to analyze real patient data. In the second activity, the students will use BLAST to identify gene variants carried by different members within a family. And this lesson will emphasize inheritance and it takes a backwards approach to pedigrees. And then lastly, we have developed some bioethics lessons focused on cancer genetic testing. We've created prompts and discussion points as an extension to the PG Ed lesson on personal genetics. So let's explore this module in greater detail, um, starting with the module introduction and theme. This theme is gonna to tie together the entire module, but each activity is standalone and has its own introduction and narrative featuring a different career in biomedicine. So the theme of this can cancer module is centered around this futuristic idea of newborn sequencing, as you can read here. But in short, fast forward many years into the future to a time when whole genome sequencing is the standard of care for newborn babies. 
The sequencing results are then made into something called the Newborn Genomic Report, or NGR. And on this report, there's a list of gene variants associated with diseases or other health risks. The Newborn Genomic Report is then added to a person's medical history. So following this narrative of newborn sequencing, one of the diseases highlighted on the Newborn Genomic Report is cancer. And gene variants associated with increased risk for cancer would be detailed on the report. And an individual with such a variant would be at risk for hereditary cancer. So hereditary cancers make up only a small portion of cancer diagnoses. Most cancers are considered sporadic and arise from mutations or new gene variants in a body cell, which is shown on the right in this figure in black. But an estimated five to 10% of cancers are linked to inherited gene variants shown on the left in orange. These variants are classified as high risk variants. And when inherited, they lead to an increased risk for cancer. And these are typically genes involved in either cell growth and, pl or, and prolifer <laughs> proliferation, or they are tumor suppressors responsible for recognizing DNA errors or controlling the cell cycle. There are several hereditary cancers, and here are a few examples in this table, uh, along with the genes that are, they are associated with. Most commonly known are the BRCA1 and 2 genes connected with risk for hereditary breast and ovarian cancer, but there's also Lynch syndrome, which is associated with colon and endometrial cancers, among others. And these in Lynch syndrome arises from inherited variants in DNA repair genes. And then the third one listed here is hereditary melanoma, which is associated with the CDKN2A gene. CDKN2A is a tumor suppressor, and people with CDKN2A variants accumulate DNA mutations at a high rate and are at greater risk for melanoma, which is a type of skin cancer, as well as other types of cancer, such as pancreatic. About 40% of hereditary melanomas are associated with CDKN2A variants. I'm drawing your attention to this gene specifically because it's the focus of two of the activities that we've designed on hereditary melanoma. So going back to the visual of our um, module here, I'm going to demonstrate two um, of the lessons and activities on hereditary cancer. The first is this one that uses the CBIO portal database. So the narrative of this activity centers around an oncologist named Dr. Ortiz. And she's preparing to see a patient who is recently diagnosed with melanoma. And this patient is only 25 years old. And when Dr. Ortiz looks at her newborn genomic report, she notices that this patient has a CDKN2A gene variant, which had increased her risk for melanoma. But this raises the question, if individuals with CDKN2A variants are diagnosed with melanoma at younger ages, then the typical age of melanoma diagnosis, which is much older. So to address this question, students will analyze real patient data on the CBIO portal database and look specifically at the age of diagnosis. The skills emphasized in this lesson are computation as well as data analysis and interpretation. To give you some background, if you've never seen the CBIO portal before, this is a publicly available database for cancer genomics. This site was created and is still hosted by Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center and houses real patient data for hundreds of studies. And the patients included in the studies hosted on this database have undergone a type of genomic analysis, such as cancer genomic tumor testing. So for most of the studies in this database, there is data on gene variants identified in patient samples. But there's also demographic data and other information that can be analyzed. So let's look at the CBIO portal and see how students could use this to look at age of diagnosis and sort a study by gene variant. So I'm just going to stop my 
sharing for a second and switch over to a web browser. Let's see bio portal. Let me just grab the spotlight here for a second. Okay. Okay, so here we are on the C bio portal. So this is the main um, landing page of the site. And each of these lines here is a study and then the number of samples included in the study. And the studies on the C bio portal are organized by tissue type and there's just grouped by what type of cancer they are focused on. And remember in our uh, narrative for this activity, we're looking at skin cancer. So if we wanted to look at the studies for skin cancer, we would use this left-hand men menu and scroll down and find skin. And we can see that there are 19 studies listed under skin. So there's a bunch of studies on this on this that look at melanoma and we wanna kind of look at um, age of diagnosis for a group of patients. So we narrowed it down to a study that has a reasonable number of patients, this study here, metastatic melanoma with 110 patients. This study comes out of the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute out at, in Boston. And this study was originally published in the journal Science in 2015. So if we select this box here and hit explore selected studies, we then see a whole bunch of data here. And there's data, there's genomic data, there's demographic data, there's clinical data, and it's all arranged in these tables. And um, there's some charts and histograms. And this could be quite overwhelming if you're just looking at this site and you see all of this data. But it actually, if you focus in on a specific piece of data, it can become quite digestible um, even, even for students. So if, we remember from our narrative, we have this patient, she's 25, she has a CDK N2A variant. And the question is, is did, was she diagnosed with cancer at a younger age because she had a CDK N2A variant? So we kind of wanna focus on this age of diagnosis. And here is this histogram of the age of at diagnosis and it has all of the patients, all 110 of them arranged here by age. And first we wanna figure out what the median age for all of the patients in this study. And remember a median is gonna be the midpoint of a data set. So if we took all the patients and we line them up from youngest to oldest, we're looking for that patient who's right in the middle. Um, we could use this histogram and estimate what we think the median would be, but the CBIO portal also has a really cool feature where you can um, calculate the median. So if we're looking at this histogram and we go to median, it brings up a new website or a new browser window, and there's these red and blue squares. So it doesn't exactly calculate the median for you, but it gives you this breakdown that makes calculating the median a little easier. So we're gonna look specifically at the patients. Um, so all 110 of our patients are shown in these two squares on the right. And we have the blue square and the red square and the key shows us the ages of the patients in each group. So these 55 patients in blue are ages 18 to 61. And these 55 patients in red are ages 62 to 86. And so to find the median, because there's an even number of patients in each group or the same number um, of patients in each group and even number of patients overall, we would need to average the oldest person in the youngest group who is 61 with the youngest person of the oldest group who is 62. And so we'd get an average of 61.5. So the median age of diagnosis for patients in this study is 61.5. But then we need to go back to our original question, which is what about patients who have CDK N2A variants? Would they be diagnosed at a younger age like we saw with the patient in the narrative? And so we can actually sort this study data by gene variant. And to do that, there's a table on the main study page called the mutated genes table. And 
what's presented here are all of the genes that were found to be mutated in the patient samples when they did the genomic tumor testing on each patient's sample, they uncovered thousands of mutations in the different patient samples. So if we're interested in CDKN2A, we could scroll and try to find it, or we could just type it in this box, N2A. And we see that there are actually nine patients in our sample size in, our, in this study that have CDKN2A variants. So we can click that box there and hit select samples. And when the page now refreshes, it's only including data for people who, for the patients that had CDK N2A variants. And so now if we look at our age of diagnosis histogram, it's really interesting. We see two distinct groups. So we see patients that are 45 and younger, and we also see a group of patients that's 65 and older. And so the activity then asks students like, well, you know, first, what do you think about these two groups and why are we seeing two groups of patients that are so different in age? But also um, the students could also then calculate the median for this group. And now we only have nine patients, it's an uneven number. So we do have one square that has more patients than the, than the other. So the red square has five. So that's the older patients from 43 to 76. So we would take the youngest person in that group who's 43. So originally the study had, um, the overall study had a median age of diagnosis of 61.5. And now this group that only has the CDK N2A variants is um, 43. And so that's quite a large difference. And so the rest of the activity prompts the students to find some individual patient data and to think about the factors that play into the development of melanoma. And if a parent, if a patient had inherited a CDK N2A variant, what that means. And also, um, as you can see, this activity is introducing biological concepts and concepts of inheritance and gene variants within the topic of cancer, but also gets students to bring math into the classroom and, and get to analyze data. So it's, it's bringing that quantitative component into biology. Okay, so I'm gonna switch back to the, sorry, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of screen, screen switching. Okay, switching back to the PowerPoint. So shifting gears, moving on to activity two. This activity is going to be focused also on hereditary cancer, but from a totally different angle. And we're gonna be looking at sequence comparison using BLAST. And so the narrative for this activity is that there's a melanoma patient named Patrice, and she is reflecting on her history of cancer. So she's been diagnosed with melanoma at the age of 68, and she reflects and she thinks about her grandfather who also had melanoma, and she's worried that she might have hereditary melanoma. Um, however, she was born too late, and that newborn sequencing had only begun 40 years ago, so she didn't have newborn sequencing, so she doesn't have any of her genetic data. She calls her daughters, and her, she asks her daughters if they have gene variants on their newborn genomic reports, but they don't. But she still wants to know if she has hereditary melanoma. So the lesson is really asking this question, does a family history of melanoma actually indicate hereditary melanoma? And really the only way to answer this question is by genetic testing. And so in this activity, the students are gonna use BLAST to look at CDKN2A variants um, for different patients and their family members. And um, using the sequence data, the sequence the students are gonna address questions about inheritance and also can construct a pedigree from family sequence data. The skills emphasized in this lesson are data analysis and, and interpretation, pattern recognition, and problem solving. 
So you may be familiar with BLAST, um, which is used for sequence comparison or sequence alignment. TTGG has um, lessons that utilize this database, um, but this is going to give you yet another opportunity to use uh, BLAST to teach students about sequence comparison. And BLAST is a tool that can be used for several types of analyses. Um, there are options to analyze DNA and protein sequences, and it is also possible to identify a gene from a sequence or compare sequences from different species. But in this activity, we're going to focus on the alignment tool in order to pinpoint differences between DNA sequences. So let's use this tool to see how we can identify hereditary melanoma. So again, I'm going to Sorry, I'm going to stop and switch back to the browser. Let me just grab the spotlight again. OK, so this is the landing page for nucleotide BLAST, which we're going to use to compare sequences. So we have this patient, Patrice, and she wants to know if she has a, mel a hereditary melanoma. And so we're going to be comparing Patrice's sequences to a reference sequence. So to do that, first we have to align, check this button to align two or more sequences. And we're going to be using a reference sequence, as I said. Now, first of all, I have the sequences that we're going to be using in this activity in a document um, in the background. So I'm not copying and pasting these from the air. But um, just so you know, all of the um, sequences that are used in the activity are actually embedded into the activity themselves. So when you go to do this, they're all um, readily available for you to use. So we're going to copy and paste this reference sequence into this top box, which is our query sequence. And the reference sequence is a standard sequence that doesn't have variation. So we're going to be able to identify if Patrice has a variant based on the comparison with this sequence. And so in order to identify if she has hereditary melanoma, we have to compare a body cell sequence. So we're going to use Patrice's cheek swab and look at the CDK N2A gene from her cheek swab. But we're also going to use um her tumor tissue as well to see if her to if it if the mutation or the variant is just in her tumor tissue or is it in her whole body and the activity gets the students to think about why you'd use a cheek swab to do this comparison and you can when you're pasting these sequences in you can just put them in one after another but if you use this description line it allows you to distinguish between the two alignments once um, the blast is complete so we're going to run the BLAST on these two sequences. And here we have Patrice's tumor tissue and then her cheek swab tissue. And we would hit the alignments tab. And then we can choose for easiest way to see differences between sequences to use this pairwise with dots for identities. This allows for an easier recognition of differences. So a dot then indicates that there's no difference in the search sequence, the subject sequence, compared to the reference, which is listed here under query. So as we're looking through the tumor tissue, we see that there's a change here in the tumor tissue sequence compared to the reference. And it is a T in the tumor tissue where there's a C in the reference. And so if we scroll down then, and look at the cheek swab, we then see that the same C to T substitution in the cheek swab, indicating that Patrice likely has a hereditary melanoma and that this variant was found in all of her cells, including in her cheek cells. So she, in the narrative, then tells her family members about this and some of them choose to be um, genetic tested and get or undergo genetic testing to find out if they have variants as well. 
And so um, we're going to edit the search so we can clear this search here. And this time we're going to copy and paste the sequences of four of Patrice's family members, which include three of her sisters and her brother. And again, we can just copy and paste these sequences. And like I said, these are provided in a in the lesson for the students. So um, everything will just be able to be copied and pasted. And so they're copied and pasted here again with the description lines. And then we hit blast. And here we can see from the results that we have these four alignments. And we can again choose the pairwise with dots for identities to see the differences. And so if we scroll down, so here we have Patrice's brother, we don't see any sequence changes in this alignment. Sister two doesn't seem to have any, sister one doesn't seem to have any, but sister three also has that same C to T uh, change in her CDK and 2A, indicating that she has also inherited the variant, putting her at risk for hereditary cancer. Um, so from this analysis, the students then are asked to think about various inheritance patterns and construct a pedigree from the data that they've gathered. They can sketch and um, shade in individuals who carry CDK and 2A variants from the information they have from um, the five generations of the family that they're provided in the activity. Um, there are also two other individuals and family scenarios included in this activity, and they emphasize different angles of inheritance and different concepts in inheritance. And the students really can spend some time figuring out what information they know for sure and how to make accurate assumptions from genetic data using this activity. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing, going back to the PowerPoint. This is the last time. Okay, so in addition to the main activities that I've just demonstrated for you um, on the CBIO portal on BLAST, we've also generated some additional lessons, which we're calling extensions and applications that we've designed to dive a little deeper into the concepts of cancer genetics. In this first activity, it's an extension that really gets into the concept that cancer is a complex disease. Genetics can influence cancer risk, it, but if you notice throughout this module, the language has been very specific. CDK N2A gene variants confer risk and increased risk for melanoma. However, carrying a high-risk variant doesn't necessarily mean a person will definitely develop melanoma. So this extension really illustrates that concept by looking at the interaction of the of genes and the environment. And so for melanoma, several factors contribute to risk, including skin color, as well as environmental factors like sun exposure. And so this is data from a published study that found that people of European descent with CDK N2A variants have different risk for melanoma depending on where they live. And this graph is showing this data. And this extension then walks the students through the analysis of this graph, which shows that individuals living in Australia have the greatest lifetime risk for melanoma. The activity also provides some discussion points, um, prompting students to think about the observed differences here, the geographic differences, and what would be underlying this data. This activity could be used as a simple graphical analysis lesson, bringing contextualized math into the classroom, but it also could be an illustration of complex genetics and would be useful to teach concepts like incomplete dominance or penetrance. And the lesson includes some genetic problems that illustrate complex inheritance. So in addition to that extension, we have something that we're calling an application, which involves inquiry. So after completing that first activity that I demonstrated showing the CBIO portal that guides students through how to investigate a median age of diagnosis, 
the students could conduct their own research on this CBIO portal. So we've provided a list of genes and associated hereditary cancers um, in this table here, and the students could then formulate a hypothesis and then find data on the CBIO portal to test their hypothesis. The activity could be used in several different ways. It could be a quick follow-up to the previous activity, confirming if a lower median age of diagnosis holds true for other genes and cancer types. This could be completed in groups or in a subsequent class period. It also could be made into a larger assignment, um, and this longer version could include a presentation, or the students could complete a write-up, which both would emphasize science communication in the form of data presentation or formulation of an analysis. Shortly, I'll be going over the teacher guide that will accompany this module, and in that guide, there are suggestions on how to implement this inquiry project. So as you may know, one of the core strands of the TTGG program is bioethics, and we have developed bioethics lessons to accompany this cancer genetics module as well. Many of you are aware of our collaboration with the personal education, or per, excuse me, personal genetics education project through Harvard called PG Ed. And in our PD programs, we highlight one of the lessons that PG Ed developed on personal genetics, which dives into questions like the ones one listed here, would you wanna know your risk for a disease that can be prevented? For the cancer genetics module, we've written additional discussion points and questions emphasizing the same bioethics framework, but centered on cancer genetic testing. The prompts include those around making genetic testing decisions based on family history and whether or not a person with cancer risk information should inform family members who may not want to know. Additionally, the second part addresses consent, and this stems from the overall theme of newborn sequencing. Babies receiving newborn sequencing obviously didn't consent to obtaining that genetic information, which ultimately ends up in their medical record. So in addition to the student copies of each lesson, we've developed a full teacher guide with a clickable table of contents um, which you've been seeing throughout this presentation. This guide includes all of the lessons and activities, as well as the descriptions with a breakdown of the skills and concepts emphasized in each lesson. We've also outlined the NGSS alignments for each activity, and we've provided um, some implementation strategies with for how you could engage with this content and also some supporting materials and tutorials. Of course, the way that you interact or engage with this or incorporate this material into your classroom is completely up to you. We've provided activities of different lengths and difficulties and you can find specific sections that could work with your existing curriculum. Alternatively, if you wanna use several of the lessons and activities, you could develop this into an entire cancer <laughs> genetics unit. There are also answer keys available, which can be um, provided upon request. To offer support for both teachers and students, we've generated a series of short instructional videos for the databases in our activities. These tutorials demonstrate how to perform specific functions in each database. Links to specific videos are embedded into each lesson, including the student versions for quick access. There are YouTube playlists for both the CBIO portal and for BLAST on the JAC's YouTube channel. If you prefer using written tutorials, we've also developed those and they are linked into the teacher guide and in the resources section of each lesson. So the cancer genetics content is live and available for immediate use. As of now, this cancer genetics content lives on our website, specifically on the genetics learning resources page, along with our other TTGG content. You can access this page by visiting the website listed here or this QR code. 
the cancer genetics content is posted at the bottom of the page, so make sure that you scroll all the way down. Click on the tiles to download the PDFs for the teacher guide or the student handouts of each activity. The components of the module have been posted separately so that you can print or distribute the activities that you want to use, and the PDFs have been formatted for student use. As I said, there are answer keys available, but for obvious reasons, we haven't included them on the website <laughs> with the lessons. Uh, but we will provide them if you would like to see them. Remember, you can always email us at ttgg at jax.org, and we can answer a quick question about this content or anything about the TTGG program. So this concludes the demonstration of the Cancer Genetics module new content. And I am happy to answer questions about this content, but first I'm gonna turn it over to the other members of the TTGG team to provide some program updates. Thanks for listening. Awesome, thanks Erica. Um, I wanna let you guys know that we are gonna be at the National Association of Biology Teachers this fall, also called NABT. It's gonna be hosted in Indianapolis. This year, we're excited to be sponsoring an exhibitor booth and also running a workshop featuring some of the content that you saw tonight, as well as some additional content that'll all be made virtually for teachers across the country. So we're looking forward to sharing that with a national audience. And if you are planning to attend, um, please come visit us. We'll be at exhibitor booth number 302. And our workshop session is 3342, and that'll be on Saturday, the 12th of November at 2 p.m. Um, I also wanted to share a little bit about um, a new update on a site called Lab Exchange. So our genomic education team at JAX has a new collaborator page hosted by Lab Exchange. Um, now there's a new way to access our TTGG content, including protocols, teacher guides, teacher training videos, as well as virtual bioinformatics lessons. This is also a place to access other useful resources such as career exploration, including our career chat series, as well as other recordings. So the website is live and you're welcome to check us out. We also have just released a new gel electrophoresis simulation. So this lab virtual lab simulation is based on our TTGG protocol, specifically looking at the ACE gene. Um, and it guides students through a little bit of background context and have some make a prediction about what their final results might look like, and then go through the process of actually conducting gel electrophoresis in a virtual environment. Um, it has some really great examples of how to use the different the tools that students might actually be using in a lab setting, um, such as the microcentrifuge and the actual gel electrophoresis um, power supply and setup. Uh, and it's a really great way to either allow students to get some practice before they actually go into a lab or replace lab with a virtual experience if, if the laboratory experience is not accessible. Um, so we're really excited about this simulation um, and we'll have some more in the pipeline that we'll be excited to introduce you to later on. So finally, I'd like to share, as Erica mentioned at the top of the meeting, that we have three more such webinars coming uh, throughout this school year. Our team has been working hard on all of these new content mo modules. Erica was the first to debut the cancer genomics ones. And in the coming months, uh, we will debut three uh, three similar modules, um, each on a different topic in genetics, again, with that same kind of focus on data literacy and, and math skills. So in December, we have the sequence comparison and identity modules. In March, we have new variant and mutations in the genome. And then in May, finally, we have ancestry, ancestry testing um, module theme. So save the dates for these. And just like this one, we also will send out emails and uh, share the links and hope that you can attend and we'll see you at one of them. And with that, I'll close this out. Thank you guys so much for attending and being such a great audience and uh, just great teacher group as always. Um, our team is on the line and we're here to answer any questions. I see that there are some in the chat, there's been some discussion, but um, 